So, I've got a couple articles of discussion for this evening. And, um, they're a bit silly. I don't, I don't know. Um, well, the first one's not. Um, I kind of had a thought brewing this last week in my brain hole. Um, the, there's this, this concept, uh, this cultural phenomenon. That I'm kind of realizing it's coming into light, and I'm kind of I'm I'm calling it the um, the can't wait to see syndrome. And oh boy, I really forgot what we're doing here. Um, it kind of goes like this. Um, right now, in the mid 2020s, which is where we're at now. Uh, next year's gonna be 2025. Uh, we have uh, a lot of things from the 2010s being rediscovered, right? Um, a lot of uh, video games from that era are, being, are finding new appreciation. Um, what else am I thinking? Oh god, there's two of them. That's terrible. Um... I should have thrown up home like first. Fuck. Brown blue boo, go. Um, <clears throat> so, a lot of games from the Xbox 360 to early um, Xbox One, PS3 to PS4. Oh my god, okay, fuck my ass. Hold on a second. I thought I had a lot more fucking battery than that. Shit. Okay. Alright, crisis averted. Um. Now we're just gonna cook my computer. Oh, I need to reset your way. There we go. Okay. Uh, anyway. Um. So a lot of games have been uh, a new a new appreciation from uh, the PS2, PS3, very early PS4 era. Um. Media is getting rediscovered, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's not, it's like, none of this stuff, when it was coming out, was necessarily forgotten, right? None of this is like lost media or hidden gems or anything like that. A lot of it was uh, pretty successful. Uh, a lot of it was pretty well publicized, you know, all that stuff. But I think more or less... Um, the thing that happened is we kind of hit the uh, the wait and see syndrome, and what I mean by that is uh, the general audiences of these things uh, enjoyed them, and then they would say to themselves, "Boy, I can't wait to see what happens next," or "I can't wait for the next installment," right? Um, and we kept waiting, and we kept waiting, and the 2010s turned into the 20-teens, turned into the 2020s, and we're kind of hitting this point of media stagnation, you know, where, like, uh, you can't really tell, it's getting harder to tell, uh, between two generations of games, graphics-wise, right? Uh, it's generally considered that writing in games is becoming poorer, uh, the proliferation of AI is ensuring that uh, a level of schlock in all this crap is just a constant, you know? Uh, hey. uh, it is like, there's been a kind of almost, um, oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, not a degradation yet, but I believe we're kind of beginning to get to that point of where things are beginning mean beginning to start looking less and less good um one of the big ones i think i've seen oh what the fuck game was that i think it was the final fantasy x remake um looks the hd remake ends up looking worse than the original it's like a lot of like these hd remakes are ending up looking worse than the originals you know that kind of thing and I know that was also a problem back when, like, they remade Metal Gear Solid 2 and all that crap, but, you know. Um, so, 
instead of like having new things to play and to enjoy, we're going back and looking for old stuff, and we find a lot of this old stuff that was pretty good, you know, like Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek Discovery is getting a new uh, appreciation, a new lease on life. Um, not for the reason that uh, it wasn't good back in the early 2000s. It was just like people doing the whole wait and see thing, you know, where we were hoping that something new would come along next and all that stuff and all that jazz. Um, I think it really impacted the most. Um, a lot of smaller freelance artists and websites who are kind of like really banking on that success, like of taking off. Um, like uh, Fred Gallagher in Megatokyo is a, a really good example. He's been um, making his uh, his comics since uh, what, 2001, I think it was. And he was once super popular. And then, um, you know, he had a big viewership and uh, he was able to support himself while his art. And then uh, that slowly started fading away. And then he had a lot of real life issues that he had to take care of. And he ended up having to, you know, take another job just to make ends meet. And, you know, that's that kind of that sucks, you know. But it was, again, I feel like his audience kind of hit the wait and see phase because we were uh, just absolutely uh, spoiled for the sheer amount of webcomics uh, available on the internet to go over, uh, to watch, or to read. Um, and we kept saying, okay, I want to see what's next. I want to see what the next guy does. I want to wait and see what happens next. And after a certain point, we just kind of... Uh, <laughs> We stopped, we ran out of stuff, you know? We ran out of things that were new. Um, and it's becoming more apparent. Like, it just kind of occurred to me this is actually a thing that's happening recently, you know? Uh, I kind of always kind of had this, uh, this vibe that I really couldn't pin down. Because it's not really, it's not nostalgia, you know? Because a lot of the stuff people are, like, advocating are things that like either they didn't know about and they just discovered or um, it was something that they had like briefly interacted with but then kind of like fell off and forgot you know it was like there was no nostalgia here because that was never really part of their lives um, just by virtue of like they just they didn't know better you know um, so yeah, that's kind of that's the wait and see, or the wait to see. So I can't really figure out which one I'm going for here. Um, but uh, if you if you kind of encounter that shit, you know, like give some more examples of like uh, the can't wait to see syndrome, because um, it's it's a tragic thing in my opinion. You know, like <laughs> like it really is sad uh, how like how optimistic the 2000s were. And I, it's kind of weird saying that, like, uh, growing up in them, because, like, if you lived in, like, from 2003 to 2007, like, you can remember a lot of that time sucking, you know? Like, uh, there were wars, there was terrorism, uh, there was stifling societal norms, there was recessions, uh, there was inflation, you know, it was just generally everything kind of seemed like it stank. And then, um, but there was just such, like, there was such optimism when it came to, like, where technology was going, where, like, creators could do all these things. Like, again, um, uh, fucking, um, It's a hard life. The the web comic, uh, the 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 Nuzlocke comic, I, I love so much. I talk about it incessantly. Um, it isn't like um, that should have been like the standard, in my opinion, of like what a a Nuzlocke comic should be. But a lot of it was, you know, maybe the audience for that there was like, okay, this was good, but let's see what the next one does. You know, let's see what the next uh 
talent can do. And, you know, it may have taken, I think he finally, or they finally finished that in like 2020, something to that effect. Um, but it, it was a lot of like, when it was hot, when it was new, when it was like, uh, able to be really appreciated at the, the full scale of the audience, the audience was already beginning to turn their attention to something new, you know? We were always looking forward, ready for the next thing, you know? All the ROM hacks that had come out back in the day, it's like, oh, we're going to wait and see, we're going to wait and see what the next one does, but we're hitting this point where there's nothing, like, we're out of next ones, you know? Um, I think I'm kind of repeating myself or I'm going to loop, but you know what? We just leveled up. No one's just ever going to learn a new ability, it seems like. I think we're trying to hit this one. 